Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're all having a great day so far. It's almost time for school again, and that means that now more than ever, it's so important to stay on top of your mental health. And one of the ways you can do that is simply by checking out How's It Really Going? It's a new campaign that really just go, goes over so many different important topics regarding your mental health to make sure that you can stay on top of it and get a lot of helpful tips. And one of the architects behind that campaign joins us now once again. It's Miranda, and we are so glad to have her here. Miranda, how are you doing today? I am doing well, and thank you for that setup, Phil. You are right. It's back to school time. Kids are excited. They are all so nervous. And with those nerves come a little bit of anxiety and just that fear of the unknown. And so I think it's important that parents are very aware uh, your kid may be presenting like, yeah, but deep inside they might be a little more uh, anxious and hesitant. <laughs> right now, and uh, I did want to go over before we, we have another surprise coming up in just a little bit for everybody watching. But before we get into that, kind of wanted to just talk about how's it really going so far. Uh, you guys have been going strong. A lot of great information has been coming in week after week on that uh, site that everybody can find just by heading on over to woodtv.com and clicking on a couple of links there. I mean, what's it been like being able to have all these conversations with so many mental health uh, officials and people that really study that uh, part of the brain and just everything about it. You know, what has it been like to be able to have these conversations, get a little bit more information, and then bringing it to everybody? It has actually been super educational for me. Um, we started the campaign in August. I'm sorry, July, where we began looking at so many different organizations in our community. We're providing great resources for families, but it was hard to find them. So we wanted to put them all in one spot at woodtv.com slash mental health. We brought in great partners who have incredible expertise. Wedgwood, Pine Rest, Meyer, Big B, and Priority Health. And we came together to say, what can we do to really give parents the tools they need to help their kids? So it's the idea of don't just say, how's it going? And your kid's like, fine. And you're like, oh, I guess they're good. It's like, take a minute and say, how is it really going? And then we give you conversation starters to get all kinds of conversations going, whether it's on substance abuse, mental health, depression, bullying, anything a kid might be feeling that impacts how they feel about themselves. So it's been an awesome campaign so far. And as we head into back to school, uh, we got to get those conversations going. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. And, you know, I kind of want to show everybody just this is what the website kind of looks like right now. As you can see, there's a lot of different uh, important topics to really kind of go over and again it's all available to you right now just head on over to woodtv.com um, and one of the things that you guys are actually going to be talking about a little bit later on is uh, one topic that I find really interesting it's a perfect way to kind of help with stress depression loneliness a whole bunch of different topics and uh, it's something called a coping mental health toolbox and like I said we did have a surprise for everybody we have a third guest joining us from Wedgwood Christian Services this is Gina Boscarino Gina thank you so much for being here today Really appreciate you kind of joining in on the conversation and help explaining a little yeah. bit more about this mental health toolbox. The, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And I guess that is just leads perfectly into that first question. You know, what exactly is this toolbox that you guys are, you know, going to be talking a little bit more in depth on how's it really going? Sure. So when we talk about a coping skills toolbox, it could be a couple of things. It might be an actual, literal coping skills toolbox, and we do have a video on our Wedgwood Positive Youth Development page that shows you how to assemble one of those, and that's just a kit of things that students can use if they are stressed out. Um, it has a list of the resources, the people that they're going to want to call if they need to talk to somebody. Um, and so that's an example of a physical toolbox. Those are great to make to keep in backpacks or to keep in lockers. Um, but you also need to have a, not a physical collection of tool, a bunch of tools that are not physical. So for example, um, part of this is having conversations with your kids. Um, you need to talk about who's going to be there for them at different times when they need to talk to somebody. Maybe when they're feeling stressed out, maybe when they're feeling anxious. Um, you can even create some sort of a flow chart that talks about, well, these are the people that I talk to in all of these instances. It's really important for students to have somebody that they can talk to at home and at school, um, an adult outside of parents, which can be tough. Mm -hmm. We also wanna talk about different coping skills, so different things that kids can do to manage those emotions. We wanna empower our kids um, to be able to handle you know, any of these feelings, whether they're feeling stressed, uh, if it's overwhelmed, if they're feeling angry. 
Um, so that can be a helpful thing for parents to do. Um, it's also a helpful thing for parents to demonstrate. So there is a lot involved when we talk about uh, coping skills. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, we just saw the video that you guys put together and it really does help out mm -hmm. uh, kind of explaining it a little bit further. But for people that maybe want some more insight on just why they should have these certain things, first off, what are some of the top things you would recommend for people to put in those physical toolboxes? And why are they so important to have? I saw, you know, scented candles. Obviously everybody likes a good scented candle, but why yeah. specifically does having that in the toolbox really help out people with their mental health? Well, a lot of people are very sensitive to sensory experiences. Um, and for a lot of people, something that they can touch, that they could smell, that they can taste, can be very soothing. Uh, obviously at school, you're probably not allowed to light a scented candle. Um, but you could have scratch and sniff stickers in there. Um, or you could have something tactile, like a stress ball, um, those little fidgets that are so popular right now. And that's a wonderful thing because that's something that they can take it to, hopefully, I might get a bunch of teachers angry at me for this, but they should be able to take that to class and use it quietly in their lap. Um, it's just something that they can keep with them when they're feeling stressed out. Mm -hmm. And just being able to have that readily available is so important. I mean, would you say that having these this toolbox readily available, I mean, is this something you would recommend people kind of start doing as they're getting ready to get all their back to school shopping done, getting ready for that first day of school coming up in really just a couple of days for a lot of kids? Absolutely, honestly. Um, and even if you have an older kid that kind of laughs at the idea, still it needs to be an important discussion that they have. They might not have this physical toolbox, but maybe they could make a list of things to do when they're feeling stressed out or who they're going to talk to, or even just thinking about the strategies. Kids aren't always aware of what's useful when they're feeling a particular emotion. And as parents, you can demonstrate that. And you can also show to your children why you're doing those things. You might say, for example, I had a really frustrating day at work, so I'm going to go for a walk. Do you care to join me? That kind of shows kids how you are using these coping skills to help you in your everyday life. Well, great stuff, and I know that we are going to have this video and other ways that people can make these toolboxes coming up in just a little bit over on our website as part of the How's It Really Going campaign. And Miranda, I want to bring you back in because you guys are going to be talking about that, and you guys have a lot of other awesome topics to really discuss, including something that you're going to be joining me back on the live desk next week for. But for people that really are following this campaign and listening to all the advice that you're giving them, kind of give them a little bit of a tease of some of the topics you guys are going to be tackling coming up in the next couple of weeks. Well, the first one that I'm excited to talk about is sleep. Nobody wants to talk about it, but we know the direct connection between sleep and behavior. In addition to that proper nutrition, what could we be eating that could settle our kids' moods and have them just be more ready and able to learn? We're going to put that whole thing together for you. In addition to that, something separation anxiety. This is one I didn't think of because, you know, you think of that with your toddlers when you have to leave them and go to work or whatever it might be. But you know what, our kids, whether they are in middle school or high school, they may experience a little bit of that anxiety. How do we help with that? How do you get that conversation started without them feeling weird? Um, it's all of those tools. And I wanna just do a shout out for Gina on this toolbox idea. The, the thought of putting a photo of your child's pet in that backpack, when they're stressed out, they're riding on the bus, they're feeling alone, and they can pull it out and say, oh my goodness, there's my dog and he's waiting for me and he mm -hmm. always loves me. Man, it's just that little tiny thing that's just going to settle people down, let your kids take a big deep breath. So many great ideas. Um, I really love the idea of that physical toolbox, but then the emotional toolbox as well. Yeah, no, definitely. And I guess, you know, this is the perfect place to kind of have these conversations on how's it really going because people are coming there for a lot of help. And this is something that, you know, as you said, is very important to have this toolbox, but it also can be kind of fun. You know, you make a family outing out of it, kind of just getting everybody together, making their own toolboxes. It really is just an awesome, awesome idea, especially as we do get closer to back to school shopping. Miranda and Gina, thank you both so much for stopping by, and we look forward to seeing a lot more coming up on how's it really going. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of course, absolutely. And I want to thank everybody else for tuning in to this latest edition of the News 8 Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.